So what does an executive producer do? I've been asked this question a lot of times in press interviews and such, and I usually give kind of a wishy-washy answer, something to the effect of, if you ask five studios, you'll get seven answers. And that's true. Let me see today if I can give at least my answer, one of those seven different answers. For me, the primary purpose of the executive producer is to serve as the meeting point between the financial pressure coming from the organization and the creative pressure coming from the team. You serve as the balancing point, the integration point, the, the place where the final decisions are made of whether you make something prioritize finance or you make it prioritize creativity. So you're kind of representing both camps at all times and trying to synthesize the needs of the project and the needs of the organization into one set of decisions going forward. Now, you might be thinking that everyone needs to do this, and that's absolutely true. You want the people on your team at least having constraints around their creativity, because without those constraints, the little tiny indie game that you are trying to make is going to be scoped like it is a hundred million dollar triple-A title. Everyone needs to at least be somewhat aware of how long things take and constraints. Going upwards, you also don't want the organization as a whole to be ignoring creativity at all and just thinking, money, 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 I don't care about quality, all I care about is money. Now you could argue that maybe that exact thinking has infected a lot of the larger publishers over the last forever, but you don't want that. You want everyone to be aware that this is a business that makes creative things, and sometimes you need to make sacrifices to prioritize creativity over finances, because that's better, ultimately, for the long-term viability of the business. All this is true, but I still maintain that the executive producer, at least when I was an executive producer, is the point at which those two forces meet in equal opposition, and therefore is where most of those really tough decisions end up being made. Now, this seems like it's forcing you to be kind of two minds within one head. And it is to some degree because you're balancing two often quite opposing forces. A tempting thought might be to move this opposition up or down such that it lies at the junction between two people. Make it so that the executive producer only cares about the finances and the other creative people that report to him care about the creativity. And then that tension exists in the intersection of those two groups, in the relationships between those two groups. And I can imagine that working, but I've actually never seen it working successfully. Because ultimately what I've always seen happening is because there's a power dynamic between these two people, what you're gonna end up with is all that happens is that meeting point just shifts somewhere. So if the executive producer is responsible for all the financial stuff and requires his team to be the ones that are carrying all of the water for the creativity, what usually ends up happening is that that uh, meeting point, rather than being between the executive producer and the other leaders below him, it just shifts down into those other leaders and they take on the burden of balancing these opposing forces. If the opposite is happening, if the executive producer only cares about creativity uh, and he reports to a studio general manager who is going to only care about finances and you want the tension point to be between the GM and the EP, what actually usually ends up happening is either it just ends up being pushed back down into the EP and you're back to where you started, or in some cases, if you're really trying to prioritize creativity, it shifts up into the GM, and now the GM is balancing creativity and financial decisions within themselves. And often what that ends up doing is it just disempowers the executive producer and turns the GM into a studio lead slash executive producer. I like the idea, it just, I've never seen it successfully done. Now, rather than going vertically, you can imagine that maybe you could somehow figure out a way where you have two equal people that share this responsibility. So you have a finance guy and you have a creative guy and they are at the same level and they oppose each other in such a way and then the contradiction lives between them this way. Again, I could imagine that working, but I've never seen that working either because, of, because what happens in that case is that whether official or not, 
They're not actually equal. There's some slight difference of power, probably soft power, maybe even just existing within their relationship. But there's something that gives one of those people more power over the other. And then as that power dynamic shifts and becomes more like this, you end up in the same place where again, one of those two people ends up taking on the burden of balancing these two things. The reason why I like the idea of finding other ways to hold this contrast, hold this contradiction than a single executive producer is that it's very wearing. It's very hard to be balancing two often oppositional things in your mind, thinking that the right thing to do right now is to finish the game. That will give us the best balance between a high quality game and not costing too much money and coming out on time. And indeed, if creativity beats everything, you run the risk of your game never shipping and nothing has a lower quality than the game that never came out. So eventually you have to come out and you have to make these balancing acts because you can punt a game down the road forever, making it higher quality, making changes, changing your engine to get slightly better vegetal quality. You can do that forever and never ever come out. Eventually your game has to come out. Eventually this balancing act has to occur. And the place that it usually happens is within the executive producer. So was I good at it? Yeah, this was actually something that I was very good at. I was actually very good at balancing the needs of budget and finance and the needs of a project to make it as good as possible. I didn't do it in the same way as other executive producers. I didn't always make the same decisions that other executive producers would have made. But yeah, I was good at doing it and good at moving the project along. Now, this isn't the only thing that an executive producer does. It arguably is not even using up most of your time, but it's probably the single most important thing that an executive producer does. Let me just add this little bit here for my fellow executive producers. If you are leading a project and you are not involved in the creative day to day, you're just focused on all of the finance and all of the business and all of the scheduling and you feel like that is freeing up the rest of your team to care only about the creativity and the quality and you're the one that's taking on the burden of everything else know that that's probably not what's actually happening they're probably having to integrate a bunch of this business stuff into their decision making in order to allow them to do their jobs and by you not integrating it into your decision making you're making their jobs harder if on the other hand you're the opposite kind of executive producer and you are quality and creativity and damn the cost damn the date we're just gonna make the bestest game that ever was, know that you're probably not making the bestest game that ever was. That by refusing to integrate the realities of the financial situation, you're forcing someone above you to make those decisions for you, and they probably don't know what they're doing, and they're going to put constraints in places that you can't handle and not put constraints in places you could easily absorb. So by abdicating this part of your responsibility, you are resulting in yourself being given a box that is of different shape than the game you're trying to make. And it's ultimately going to make your game worse. While it is annoying and terrible and incredibly exhausting to be the point where these two forces meet, it is the best way to make the best game that is possible to make within your organization. Special thanks to my members. They provide the resources that this channel needs to keep running. If you're interested in becoming a member, there's a link to that down in the description. Do you think executive producer in video games is a title that's starting to go away? I'm seeing a lot more creative directors, project directors, game producers, titles like that being the public faces of games. Used to be we were all EPs, now EP may be something that's going away. Let me know down in the comments. If you're interested in picking up some merch, I'm currently wearing, you may, you may all now celebrate, which is appropriate for an EP because the EP is the one that gets to say that. Um, if you're interested in picking up some merch, there's a shelf below this video. It helps the channel out as well. I will see you again soon. Thank you.